Um, our next up, we uh, brought a gentleman in from Holland to talk to us. Uh, we wanted to learn a little bit more about uh, metal yacht construction. And um, I had the pleasure of going over to Holland a couple of times last year. Uh, I met with Guido de Groot while I was there. Um, Guido is a, uh, a yacht designer. He uh, graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree with honors from the Art Center College of Design in Pasadena in USA, California. Worked for more than six years as a car designer in Paris for the French car manufacturer Citroën. His love affair with yachts began back in 1986 when he, when he saw the fourth Highlander close to completion at the De Vries Fed Shipyard. Awestruck by the majesty of this 45 meter masterpiece, he started drawing yachts in parallel with his career in car design. The next decade was spent learning everything there was to know about luxury yachts. He launched Guido de Groot Design in 1997, specializing in innovative interiors and exteriors for both luxury motor and sailing yachts. Guido comes to us through uh, Anko Koch. Anko is uh, the uh, Dutch Yacht Embassy Ambassador and uh, a great supporter of our business, loves, uh, loves South Florida, loves the yachting community, and has brought Guido to come talk to us. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here my presentation starts. I start with my hometown. That's where my office is in Holland. Uh, we have eight designers in our office. Um, we are doing boats using different materials, uh, designing it for uh, different shipyards all around the world. Uh, using steel, aluminium, but also GRP yachts. Um, uh, we also even do wood epoxy yachts, um, uh, building them different sizes from 8 meters up to over 100 meters. Um, I'm asked to talk about uh, uh, aluminium and steel yacht construction. I want to focus on the aluminium uh, construction of yachts. I think it's more interesting to talk about, um, uh, especially here in Florida. I think it's, uh, uh, it's uh, also for you to, to interact with me about aluminium. I think it's more interesting to talk about. Um, to show you how easy it is to build an aluminium yacht I show you just a small movie. how easy it is. <laughs> However, 20 years ago when I started um, uh, talking about easy, that's uh, a fat ship and uh, it's one of my first projects and there's been a lot of swearing at the shipyard because double curved curves on the corners of this transom, how are we going to make this? And uh, it's quite funny when you think about it now that at, at that time it was an issue. And if we take yachts five years or uh, 15 years later or from uh, five years ago, this is possible. You can use all kinds of shapes in aluminium construction, uh, negative shape, shapes, positive shapes, uh, lines that disappear in nothing, uh, another sample of a sailing yacht. Um, Basically everything is possible today and that has a lot to do with 3D engineering. Uh, when we design a yacht, um, in an early stage we start working in 3D with 3D computer software and also the naval architect, he's going to work with um, uh, his programs in 3D uh, to do the engineering, the calculations um, and from the 3D data they are making complete, uh, they make the cutting files 
for CNC cutting. And what comes to the shipyard is basically a, uh, a building kit, a smart building kit. Um, a lot of the yachts I'm showing are Dutch yachts. Uh, that has a lot to do with the fact that I think 25, 30 years ago, you saw, for instance, in Italy, they went into large series with GRP. In Holland, they decided to go for small series, one-offs, uh, building it in steel and aluminium. Um, both in Italy and also in the States, you have, uh, of course, a lot of know-how in GRP. I think in Holland, we have a lot of know-how in steel and aluminium. So what are the advantages of aluminium? Um, you can build them in small series uh, without having the cost of building molds. Uh, molds are costly, so you, um, uh, so for one boat or a small series, it's not effective to uh, build in GRP. It's better to build them in aluminium. Exclusivity. Um, this is a yacht. They're going to be. Uh, they're going to launch it. Uh, next month there's going to be only one of them so this is uh, 73 feet designed only for one client uh, in that case you build it from aluminium you're not going to produce molds for one boat and same uh, counts for small series uh, you, you can build limited editions Another thing, the lifespan with aluminium yachts and also with steel yachts, uh, it lasts longer and you can even give a yacht a second life. This is an old CRN yacht and we're refitting it now and give it a new look. Um, uh, no, uh, yeah, another thing is um, you can recycle it as well, uh, the material. Um, <coughs> Freedom of shapes in, and the size. I mean, you're not going to build a 100 meter yacht out, uh, out of a mold. Um, but also in terms of shapes, uh, you don't have to uh, work with uh, molding angles. Uh, you, you can create uh, undercuts more easily. Uh, so with GRP, you always have to deal with molding angles and yeah, can it easily be produ produced in GRP. Safety. What a nice photo. <laughs> How this can you go? Uh, a boat that went through a dike. Um, basically, uh, the construction of an aluminium yacht is, um, is strong because of the construction with all the frames, the stringers, but also the material itself. Um, it dents, it, uh, it doesn't tear or shear apart. It's only dense. There is a story of a sailing yacht, an aluminium sailing yacht, that has been um, uh, run over by a container ship and didn't sink. Uh, it was completely deformed, but it didn't sink. Um, safety also, uh, it doesn't burn. I mean, there was. Not a long time ago, uh, I think two weeks ago in Spain, there was a uh, big fire in, an, in the harbor. And you saw all the GRP boats melting away uh, while aluminium, it doesn't burn, it doesn't sink. You don't actually have to paint it. Uh, all the paint on a yacht, on an aluminium yacht, is decorative. Uh, there's no need for it, actually. Um, so, yeah, you can actually le leave it without paint on it. What are the disadvantages? Well, you need a lot of building know-how. You need a good shipyard, good welders, because you're using a lot of heat. Uh, uh, using a lot of heat means you can deform the aluminium. So you have to be uh, aware of that. Um, also, um, you need good electricians uh, because of elect electrolysis. I go into that uh, later. Uh, and you need good painters for fairing 
and painting the boat. So actually these are the sort of steps, aluminium, fairing and the first paint on top of the boat. Delivery time for production uh, boats. If it's aluminium, uh, you cannot compete with series production boats uh, that are GRP because it will take longer. Uh, what you do see that some of the known yards, successful yards that built in aluminium, they start building boats or cascos on speculations to overcome the long delivery times. Those frames, they're always in the way when you do the interior. <laughs> Um, so you have to be aware that you lose some interior space when you do an aluminium and also a steel boat. Uh, they have to be strong, the, uh, the boat, so you have to deal, you cannot cut them away. Uh, you have to work with the interior around them. Uh, some shipyards say you get the same uh, space as an, uh, a GRP boat, but I know that's not true. Uh, you, you lose space. is something from myself. I think if you build in aluminium and it has such a long lifespan, it might be, but okay, uh, not necessarily uh, be aware that it should still look okay in 50 years. So maybe it's nice to go for a timeless design uh, that still works in 50 years. And then electrolysis. Well, when I uh, told some Dutch shipyards that I was coming here today and uh, speak with you, they said, oh gee, those people here, they're going to be so skeptical about aluminium. And uh, yeah, you have to tell them there's no need for that. It's a problem from the past, uh, for sure, but most shipyards, of all good shipyards, have it under control. Um, Electrolysis uh, has to do with, uh, you're not, uh, you have to isolate aluminium from steel, um, so you don't get uh, electrolysis, but also the electrical wiring has to be okay. Uh, if there is electrolysis, it's the fault of the shipyard. That's why I'm saying you need good shipyards with a lot of know-how, how to deal with it. And, uh, that comes in Holland and um, yeah, they're doing it now for such a long time. They know the problems and they know what to do against it. Um, there are of course ex ex external um, um, uh, influences that can also cause electrolysis. Uh, when it's for instance in an environment that is electri electrically uh, uh, polluted. Um, there are warning systems for that today that on board you um, can find out that there is pollution, electrically pollution on board. Uh, so you can take action. Uh, if your boat is next to a boat that has a electrical malfunction and that can cause electrolysis on your boat, you know it then because of the warning and you have, yeah, you have to warn the boat next to you or you just take it away from it. Some case studies. Um, this is at uh, Van der Valk ya uh, yard in Holland. Um, they are now finishing a trawler yacht in aluminium. Uh, shows a little bit the, 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 the boat under construction. Now, why building a trawler yacht out of aluminium? Well, first of all, they want to have this boat go a little bit faster than other trawler yachts. But it's also uh, lightweight, that means um, less draft, longer range. Um, but also using thicker plates of aluminium, uh, that gives an enormous extra strength to the whole yacht. Uh, you, you can really make the boat a lot stronger. Uh, here you see the fairing, as I, um, it's a big part of the boat doing the fairing and the painting. Uh, this boat is going to get uh, a wide hull. Um, 
white is always a better color for aluminium but we do also do at the moment aluminium yachts that are have black hulls but because of for instance here in florida where the yacht will heat up it's always better to use a light color uh, but yeah as said we also doing yachts with very very dark colors Another case study, uh, Fenguish yachts in Holland. These are yachts around uh, uh, 50 feet. Uh, this is 48 feet in the construction. It's quite interesting what they are doing. They, in the construction, they, the interior forward is already part of the construction. So the sofa is already in the saloon, is in the construction. The wall of the bathroom is already in the construction part of the galley is in the construction. So what you get is an extremely stiff boat, and this is a high-speed boat, so uh, it performs really, really well. Uh, this yard goes quite far with the aluminium. Uh, they also fold the aluminium to have less uh, welding spots. Uh, this is the this aft seating area, the sunbathing area. The surfaces there are folded and then welded together. How far they go, uh, they also make the helm seats out of aluminium. And also the dashboard, and they don't care if it is a complicated shape, they just like doing it. Uh, the person welding there is actually the owner of Fengers Yachts. <laughs> And uh, yeah, uh, they, they make actually everything uh, out of aluminium. Uh, they just enjoy using the material. Uh, this is their production line. They can build maximum 20 yachts a year. Uh, the problem with aluminium is you need good welders, you need painters, and those people are not always available. I mean, it's easier in that respect to get a boat from the mold. So, but you can eat yacht, you can really build it to your own wishes. Uh, this is Tom again. And uh, actually, Tom asked me uh, if it's okay if I show him, uh, show you the latest uh, brand movie. I think it's quite a nice uh, movie. Uh, sorry for the voiceover, it's a little bit over the top, but here it is. <laughs> Maybe we can say that also a little bit for aluminium. Uh, aluminium, not for everyone, but um, talking with shipyards uh, in Holland, actually, they would actually also like to know from you why you would build and when would you like to have a client step into an aluminium yacht that, or, uh, that he constructs an aluminium yacht. It would be nice to have a sort of interaction with you to say why would you um, tell your client you should buy an aluminium yacht. <laughs> so that's my question to you. <laughs> Does anybody have an answer? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think that there are a lot of prejudices. Um, I'm not here to 
you know, promote aluminum yacht construction by any stretch of the imagination. But I'll tell you, I've been at this for a little while, and you know, I grew up with cold molded mahogany boats, and then they started putting fiberglass on the outside of them and painting them and making them nicer and nicer. And then fiberglass was, you know, the standard. I'm not, I'm not that old. I mean, there were fiberglass boats when I was a kid, but uh, you know, fiberglass has really become the standard here in the United States, and Interestingly for me, in the trips that I made to Europe last year, I got to learn a lot more about aluminum construction, and there have been su su significant advances in aluminum construction, as I learned, in, in a limited amount that I learned. Um, Guido, can you, can you talk a little bit about how they cut the aluminum and how they weld it? Are you, are you dialed in on that, as opposed to how they used to do it in the past? Um, well, as I, as I explained, um the cutting is, uh, they make the cutting files, um, the, the cutting, CNC cutting, can be with uh, laser cutting or um, the plasma cutting. With router. Yeah, and um, the, the, the welding needs, of course, a lot of uh, heat, so it's make welding. Um, uh, as said before, uh, you have to be aware there's a lot of deformation uh, during the welding, so it's better to have less welding spots. But that can be already when they do those, uh, make those building kits, they, they can already fit them that it is already by itself uh, standing straight up in, 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 in place to have less uh, um, um, welding um, uh, spot. So I had the pleasure of being on that white trawler that he was uh, showing pictures of, and one of the things that they explained to me over there was that they were using um, routers to cut the aluminum. And when they use the router to cut it, it doesn't generate as much heat. It also gives you a perfect 90 degree angle between the surface and the cut. When you've got a perfect 90 degree angle, it allows them to use less heat in their welding process, so there's less deformation. When there's less deformation, they need to use less fairing compound, so you don't make the boat as heavy, you don't make the boat, I mean, I always had this vision of hitting a wave and the fairing compound come flying off of a boat. Yeah. But they use a lot less of that now, so they're able to finish things better today. They're able to use different alloys of aluminum that didn't even exist yeah. Yeah. in years past. Yeah. And one of the things that Guido mentioned that I don't know if, uh, uh, anybody caught was that you don't need to paint it. The fact of the matter is that the aluminum on its surface will oxidize on a, a very thin layer and it prevents any further degradation of the material unless you introduce a fresh surface. Like if you scratch it or gouge it, well then whatever new introduction you've made will corrode as well. But the corrosion on the surface of the aluminum, in fact, protects the remainder of the thickness of the aluminum without any protective coating on it. Yes. Guido, I have a couple questions. Uh, just first on the comment of uh, no paint. It's awesome that way, but it gets wicked hot. So uh, you got to <laughs> yep. take that into account. Great when you're in the Arctic Circle, I suppose. But. Um, uh, the problem with aluminum construction, both as a former aluminum construction boat builder and a captain and guy that's been in a lot of shipyards, uh, the raw, it's not just electroly electrolysis is a problem, of course, and they're, they're susceptible to it, but um, also where there's a lot of water flow, the raw water systems seem to be very susceptible, and I'm talking in uh, older construction of uh, Browards and Trinities, uh, the, the bilge and the raw water systems were really susceptible to uh, uh, deterioration, and it wasn't electrolysis, it was just the flow of seawater going through there. Uh, is there a solution now, or you just have to change that stuff a lot? Uh, well, I cannot really tell you. Um, I'm, I'm, I, what I can say is, if we're talking about aluminium, I, I showed you, of course, the Van der Valk yacht, uh, but also uh, some boats from Mulder yacht. Their last uh, Van der Valk 60 boats, they are, uh, except one, they're all aluminium. So I expect in that process, yeah, they, they learned from all the problems and probably also the problems you are mentioning. And uh, they developing it further and further. So I, I cannot give you the answer, but I know those yards are just improving, improving, and making their product better and better. 
And it's the same actually with, uh, as I mentioned, Italian shipyards, they are GRP boats getting better, better and better and stronger and stronger. So it's that div uh, division in know-how, uh, what I was mentioning, Holland, steel, aluminium, uh, Italy, and also the States, GRP. Um, so I can only tell you that. <laughs> Do you have any experience with uh, industrial adhesives and gluing aluminum together? No, 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 I don't. No, no. It's of course in the the, the um, uh, aircraft industry. Uh, it's happening. Uh, funny enough, also there you see a little bit. Uh, I think with uh, Boeing is going more for the plastics, and Airbus is still going more for advanced aluminiums uh, and and gluing. <laughs> Uh, but in the yacht industry, no, I don't. When you plate the boats, do you just tack the plates and then weld the boat from... When you actually build the boat, uh, I, I built 12 meter uh, race boats in uh, uh, Minford Yacht Yards years ago, and what we did was we tacked the whole boat, and then we started in the middle with four welders, and we had one on each side going uh, to the bow of the stern, port and starboard so we and we welded the boat continual for 24 hours we just kept welding until all the boats were, plates were welded to try and minimize the shrinkage in the boat because it was built to specific race rules do you do the same thing over there when you plate the boats or do you just plate them weld them or do you fully cover the boat and then then weld it stop the, uh, start to finish um, well, uh, quite often to, to speed up uh, production, they, they sometimes even start with the transom and uh, the part, uh, the, 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 or even the part, uh, the, the middle part, when the engine room is not engineered, they stop, uh, they, they don't produce it yet, so, uh, so they start putting it together later in segments. Okay. okay. So, um, Friends of mine in Australia build those big high-speed weight piercing ferries, and they do the same thing. They build them in sections, yeah. bring them into the yard, and then weld them all together. But they're built to commercial grade, so there's yeah. no filler on the hulls. You can count the plates on the boats like a naval ship, yeah. because that's, they don't need weight. You know, yeah. the, the only place they say that weight's a benefit is in a bulldozer, in a wheel, in a what do you call it? steamroller. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, the other question I had was. Mm -hmm. um, when you bend your forms on your plates, don't you break down the molecular structure on the bend and the strength or not? No, no, you don't. No. Thanks. Any other questions? We have time for one more. Rich Marriage has one more back. Cindy, do you have a microphone for Rich? I was just wondering if you're using any robotics for welding. No. Okay. No, I've not seen that yet. All very well-trained little Dutchmen. <laughs> Guido, thank you very yeah. much for a really good presentation. Thank we you. enjoyed that. Thank you. Okay, thank you.